In the realm of classic horror cinema, few films have left an enduring mark like the 1973 masterpiece, The Exorcist. Directed by William Friedkin, this iconic movie delves into the terrifying realm of demonic possession, unnerving audiences with its chilling narrative and spine-tingling performances. Have you ever pondered a specific moment from The Exorcist that left an indelible impact on your psyche? Perhaps a scene that lingers in your memory, haunting your thoughts long after the credits roll. The film's ability to evoke such visceral reactions has made it a touchstone for horror enthusiasts. Do you hold a cherished memory associated with this cinematic landmark? Whether it's a communal viewing experience or a personal connection to the narrative, The Exorcist has woven its way into the fabric of countless lives. We invite you to share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this cinematic gem in the comments below. Hey Stories provide a unique tapestry of perspectives that enrich the collective appreciation of this timeless horror classic. The Exorcist, a 1973 horror film directed by William Friedkin, is renowned for its chilling portrayal of demonic possession. Adapted from William Peter Blatty's novel, the story revolves around the possession of a young girl named Regan McNeil. When strange occurrences befall Regan, her concerned mother seeks medical and psychological help to no avail. Desperate, she turns to Father Caris, a doubting Jesuit priest. Recognizing the need for an exorcism, Father Marin, an experienced exorcist, joins forces with Father Caris to confront the malevolent force within Regan. The film's gritty realism, intense performances, and unsettling atmosphere contributed to its iconic status. Linda Blair's portrayal of the possessed Regan remains haunting, while Max von Sydow's stoic father Marin adds gravitas. The Exorcist left an indelible mark on popular culture, influencing subsequent horror films and solidifying its place in cinematic history as a benchmark for supernatural horror. The spider walk scene in The Exorcist, initially cut from the film, found new life in Ruby and other low-budget productions. This iconic sequence, once sidelined, gained recognition beyond the 1973 movie. William Friedkin, the director, explained in a documentary that Jason Miller secured the role of Father Caras due to a stage performance oozing with failed Catholicism. Miller's portrayal brought depth to the character. Ellen Burstyn, on the other hand, objected to a specific exchange in the film's conclusion. Her character's belief in the devil, but not in God, sparked controversy. These behind-the-scenes insights add layers to the film's production, offering a glimpse into the choices and challenges faced by the creators. Such details contribute to the complex narrative of The Exorcist, shedding light on the creative decisions that shaped its impact. Upon rejecting Lalo Skifrin's score, director William Friedkin stumbled upon Mike Oldfield's tubular bells in the office of Atlantic Records' chief Ahmet Erdogan. Intrigued by the album cover, he decided on the spot to use it as the theme for the movie. This unconventional choice marked a pivotal moment in shaping the film's auditory experience. In the UK, the release of the movie prompted several town councils to ban its screening, leading to the emergence of exorcist bus trips. Enterprising travel companies organized buses to transport groups to the nearest town where the film could be shown, highlighting the societal impact and controversy surrounding The Exorcist. In a 287 poll by The Times for the top 50 scariest movie moments, The Exorcist claimed the top spot. This recognition solidifies its lasting influence and enduring reputation in the horror genre. From its unique soundtrack selection to the controversial bands and ultimate acknowledgement as the scariest movie moment, The Exorcist continues to hold a distinctive place in cinematic history. These lesser-known aspects add depth to the narrative of the film, revealing intriguing behind-the-scenes details that contributed to its enduring legacy. In a chilling twist connected to the 1973 movie The Exorcist, the carotid angiography scene introduces Paul Bateson, an actual serial killer. Serving as a radiologist in the film, Bateson later became a prime suspect in the real-life bag murders from 1977-1978. Convicted of murdering film critic Addison Verrill, the gruesome details of Bateson's crimes inspired another William Friedkin film, Cruising, starring Al Pacino. Adding a physical dimension to a disturbing scene, the crucifix masturbation shot involving Regan utilized a double Eileen Diets. William Friedkin opted for diets when Regan's mother is struck, emphasizing the need for a more robust performer filmed discreetly from behind.
further intertwining reality and fiction, the Prospect Avenue apartment setting, where the story unfolds, once belonged to the author William Peter Blatty during his time at Georgetown University. The house, owned by Miss Florence Mahoney, posed logistical challenges during filming, necessitating the construction of special sets to preserve her garden plants from sunlight deprivation. These unsettling connections to a real-life killer, the behind-the-scenes stunt work, and the apartment's history weave a tapestry of intrigue around The Exorcist, offering a stark glimpse into the film's creation and the shadows that linger behind its narrative. In a chilling twist tied to the movie, the arteriogram scene in The Exorcist features Paul Bateson, an X-ray technician at New York University Medical Center. Convicted in 1979 for murdering a film critic, Bateson was also a suspect in the mysterious bag murders. Despite boasting about these crimes, he was never officially charged for them. Bateson's dark story later inspired the film Cruising, directed by William Friedkin. William Peter Blatty, the author of the novel that inspired the movie, based his work on a real exorcism from 1949. This incident, involving a 13-year-old boy named Robbie, unfolded in Cottage City, Maryland, and St. Louis, Missouri. The minister's claim of a six-week-long exorcism became a basis for Blatty's narrative, adding a haunting layer to the exorcist's origins. Another intriguing detail emerges in the language lab scene, where a white banner displays the Japanese letters Tasuki in red, meaning help me. This subtle yet impactful detail adds a layer of depth to the movie's ominous atmosphere. These real-life connections from Paul Bateson's unsettling involvement to the authentic exorcism inspiring the novel weave an intricate background to The Exorcist. These details, both on and off-screen, contribute to the film's lasting impact on the horror genre, showcasing the unsettling blend of reality and fiction. The chilling atmosphere of the Exorcist iconic scenes wasn't just acting the refrigerated bedroom set was a bone-chilling experience for the cast and crew. Cooled with four air conditioners, temperatures plunged below 30 degrees, causing perspiration to freeze on some. In an unexpected turn, moisture-saturated air led to a thin layer of snow on the set. This behind-the-scenes struggle added an intense physical dimension to the film's eerie ambience. The original teaser trailer, a rapid succession of the white-faced demon, faced bands in numerous theaters for being deemed too frightening. This visceral impact set the tone for the movie's reputation as a terrifying experience. It's a testament to the film's ability to evoke fear, leaving an indelible mark on the audience even before they entered the theater. Interestingly, Stanley Kubrick, a master of suspense himself, was considered to direct The Exorcist. The studio's contemplation of such a renowned director speaks volumes about the potential they saw in the film. Kubrick, impressed by the movie, acknowledged its prowess, adding a layer of acclaim to The Exorcist's legacy. From the bone-chilling set conditions to the spine-tingling trailer and the consideration of a legendary director, The Exorcist's journey to the screen was as intense as the possession it portrayed, leaving an enduring impact on horror cinema. As we bid adieu to the mystifying journey of The Exorcist, take a moment to unravel the threads that tether your soul to this cinematic enigma. The echoes of Rigan's possessed whispers and the haunting ambience of Father Marin's solemn exorcism linger in the recesses of our minds. Whether you stumbled upon this cinematic masterpiece in the shadows of a dimly lit theater or within the intimate confines of your living room, The Exorcist has woven itself into the fabric of our shared cultural consciousness. It's a narrative that transcends time, beckoning us to confront the supernatural and question the boundaries between belief and skepticism. Perhaps you found solace in the psychological intricacies, the spine-chilling suspense, or the exploration of faith in the face of unspeakable evil. This tale of demonic possession isn't just a cinematic spectacle, it's a mirror reflecting our deepest fears and challenging us to peer into the abyss. As you reflect on your own communion with the exorcist, we invite you to share your most poignant memories or profound musings about this timeless tale. What stirred within you as the possessed brigand contorted in otherworldly agony, or as Father Keras grappled with the complexities of faith and doubt? Let your thoughts manifest and let the words flow like incantations. The Exorcist isn't just a film, it's a shared experience, a collective shiver that unites us in the face of the unknown. Thank you for embarking on this introspective journey with us. Hey, reflections are the echoes that resonate through the corridors of cinematic history, and we are grateful for your time and resonance.